Property Resource is a website that combines a bunch of MLSs, um, some assessor data, and a few other places um, across our nation. And so it kind of acts like our own little national MLS. So for example, some of you have asked about how to, um, if, if one of our Ames Realtors can help you find something on their MLS. Well, you can actually likely get it here because this almost pretty much gives you access to their MLS. So for example, Ames, Iowa, we've got to put in a um, zip code. And it's got a map and you can use a polygon on the map just like you can in the MLS. It's being a little slow. But as you can see here, you can search sold properties. You can put in a date range of sold properties, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. Okay? So it acts somewhat like our MLS. So to log in to RPR for the first time, Erin's logged in here, we're going to sign her out. You go to create new account, and this is on your piece of paper there. And it wants your last name and your nerds number. <coughs> if you don't know what your nerds number is, it gives you four ways to look up your nerds number. Okay? And then once you've logged in that way, you're going to be assigned a username and you're going to set up a username and password. And do try to save that because it only keeps you logged in for two weeks. So you're going to want to write that username and password down somewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. So mostly I'm using this site for some extended reports, reports that are easily created. Are you timing me? Yep. Aaron Rundle. And can we give Erin Rundle a round of applause because she is heading yeah. the technology. <laughs> and um, she's been organizing our meetings and trying to bring some better tech classes and ideas and stuff to the Market Center. Um, and she's just a great resource for planning and organizing all of this stuff. So this is what it looks like once you're in. I'm going to quickly change over to showing you um, the app because I kind of just figured this out and I like this a lot. So just one? <coughs> just one. Okay. So you'll want to download, we'll see how this works. I've never done this on um, the overhead here, but we might get us close. So it, you know, some of these apps that are out there, Keller Williams app, unfortunately, the um, Matrix app, stuff like that, it's not always giving me all the content that I want on my phone at that moment. This will do uh, properties for sale within a range. So if you're sitting in a house and you want to know what's for sale around you, right now it knows I'm in West Des Moines, um, and it's only pulling up a half mile radius. That's why it says zero properties for sale right here. Um, because maybe within a half mile, it's mostly commercial. So it will tell you that. What I love is to search for a property. So I'm going to, let's say you're in a house and someone says, well, we really like this house. We think we're going to write an offer. Um, this is probably not going to work. Yeah, you won't be able to read it. Let's see, is it the help of our, uh, kind of out here. Yeah, okay. yeah how, do you, how do you zoom in on this? Oh, no, okay. okay. Now focus. No. Focus. Nope. Thank you. Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay. So it's giving me all the photos when you know you're in the house, so that doesn't really matter. This RVM, that is the list price you see there. The RVM is kind of like the realtor's version of a Zestimate. But it's actually pulling MLS information. So it's probably better than a Zestimate. And I, I do believe realtors think this property is worth 392 and I've got it listed at 375. So you should all go out and show up tomorrow. Um, so that's where, and that's actually probably accurate because I do believe this house is worth more, but it's got a golf cart path right in the backyard, a little close to the house. 
Um, so I do think the value is a little bit closer to 392, but we've had to adjust for the park path in the backyard. What I also like is this. Um, this can, you just click this and it goes straight to the realtor, you know, when sometimes you're sitting in the house and you need to um, call the realtor. So I guess I could have clicked that little button right there too. So it can call the realtor straight from there. And it's got the agent remarks. Some of these apps don't show the agent remarks. And it's got the description. Um, you can find nearby properties for sale. You can buy nearby, find nearby comps. I love this and saying the owner's name, where is the loan, and what was her original loan amount. Okay, sometimes you might be using that to your advantage. Do you think you are? Anyways. Um, and then just additional information. <coughs> Oh, this one I like, the price change history, because sometimes on our sheets that we're carrying around with us might have one price reduction, but it doesn't have the entire history. So I like that this will show how many um, price reductions they've taken. This one's just had one since we uh, listed it. And then again, the prior um, sales history, she was the only owner on this home, so. Okay, so a lot of cool information on the app. I'm gonna start using that a lot more. Okay, the site is really easy to use. Can we hit the lights again? Mm -hmm. Or was it better to have the lights not on at all? Up to you guys. Do we have to use it? How does that? So, this, you can build market, pretty nice uh, market CMAs on this site. It gives you about 43 page CMA. Uh, and it's got a lot of different charts and data. It prints out all the uh, pending and listed stuff within you know, a half a mile of this house. So you might not want to use the entire thing. I'll leave these up here for after class. You might want, not want to use the entire 40 pages, but there's some of these pages that look really good that is going to look a lot better than some people's market analysis. So make you look good when you are at the property. And so does, let's, does the site allow you to select the pages that you want to use? Um, no, I think you're just printing them and pulling them out. So I'm going to grab, this is a house that's not for sale, it's my old house. So you can just go there. It's going to pull up all the information on the house that the system knows about. And then, um, okay, I'm going to read my own notes. I thought the blue button was up here. Search the address, hit create on Google. Create a email. I think that. I think that's just create any reports. What am I doing wrong here? Maybe. Can I ask you a question? Huh? Okay. Yeah, it just it must have looked different on my Mac or something because it was a blue button that said create report. That just takes you to all the reports. But there it says create comparative analysis. Red arrow or blue arrow. Yeah, so we're there. So we made we still made it to the same spot. So it's really easy. Um, it's you, uh, you can edit the home facts if you want to change bedrooms, bathrooms, if for some reason what it's pulling in is wrong. And then you um, can add comps, and I recommend getting those comps straight from the, so get them from the MLS first, and then put them in here, and that's really easy to do. Let's say the address of my comp is 1521, 1520 Center Street, Des Moines, Iowa. <coughs> Oh, I've already added it once, so it's right there. Okay, so that's all you do. So once you find those comps on the MLS that you want to use in this fancy report, just enter them there. It's going to pull them over here. Okay. Yeah. So you hit update, and then you can make adjustments, but you really can only do um, worse or better. And then you print report. So really it's just those steps right there and you get that 45 page report.
Now, the other thing that I'm using it for is really everything that you will likely want to use is under this reports button. So a property report, that was a property report. A seller's report, or is that, yes, the, I'm sorry, the CMA is called the seller's report. The property report gives you some, gives you just a recap of your photos, the home caps, the home, home facts. What I do is pull out the last four pages of the property report, which gives you the neighborhood people, sales, or stats and charts. So population, normal, you know, uh, estimated home value of homes in Grimes or Polk City. Um, household income brackets for Grimes. Neighborhood economic stats and charts in Grimes. Quality of life stats and charts, like average commute time, how people get to work, average monthly temperature, that kind of stuff. So it's just fun stuff. If you've been in those listings where they have a three ring binder sitting out on the dining room table, I love those. This is great information for that, or it's great information for your open house. And that's the last four pages of the seller's report, or whoops, sorry, I keep getting them confused, property report. And all you do there is you punch in the address at the top. Again, all I did was click on the reports button, you put the address in here, you click property report, and you hit run report. Okay, it also does a school report. You put in a school, and it's going to give you back a school report. Okay, so great stuff for open houses, or the dining room table binder, or your listing presentation. You can also do property flyers from here. They're not bad looking. Um, I'll just show you the thumbnail real quick. But um, Nora's going to show you how to make cool property flyers in my, uh, the Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. But if you're in a hurry and you need a quick property flyer for your open house, this one, it, you just spit it right out. To get your photo information correct, um, all that, you need to hit where it says welcome in your name. That's in your notes there. And you need to update all your stuff so that you have all the correct information in our pair. But it's literally just go to the reports page, pick your report, hit run report. Do you have a Three minutes for questions. Uh, we'll have to get you uh, a copy of it. I'm going to scan them in and I'll post every all the handouts. Okay. So we're keeping this to 15 minutes. And so um, Aaron Rundle has, we have how many times? You have um, three minutes to answer questions. Do you have any questions? Oh, okay. Uh, one of those pictures was a map with surrounding properties for uh -huh. the price. Was that the last? What part of those prices come from? It's all. It's it's either say, uh, active, pending, or sold. So it's just like the MLS. Okay. It's going to give you the active price, the pending, active price, or the sold price. So it's literally just kind of a different version of our MLS. Set the date range. What's that? You have to set the date range. Mm -hmm. If you want to, yeah, just like on the MLS. If you want to do that. So um, it is pulling in a lot of MLSs are participating, but not all of them. But big cities definitely are on here. So if you're just curious about a condo in Chicago, and you kind of want to run the comps on it, you can't really do that from our PR. Other questions? <clears throat> OK, let's bring the next person up here, which is Nora. I'll leave these reports here for anybody. And it says on here, pro seller's report, property report, or school report. <coughs> on the school report, it show it prints out all the active listings around the school. I would pull those pages out because we you don't always know that those are in that school district. <coughs> Can I help you with anything? Okay. Right. I'm making sure all my stuff that I practice. Oh, you probably here. need this though. No, you have to mic up. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to hear me breathing through the rest of the class. It's got to get mic up. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you for showing us. Hello. Let me know if it's working. Okay, great. So I've decided I am never following Rochelle again. I want to go first. But we're going to go over to Michael Lewis. This is the link, the mlms2.orderingstore.com. If you also search on Michael Lewis Marketing, this is where it will take you. 
if you haven't been in Michael Lewis, it's a really cool resource for anything marketing, handout, papery to market your listing, right? Love the postcards. I've sent out the jumbo postcards, and they do take a little bit longer for the cheaper third class mailing, or whatever they call it. But if you have a listing that's maybe a little bit higher price range, and you know that it might take more than a week or a day to sell, maybe it's the right time to do that because they are phenomenal quality. Or if you have a client who insists that you send it. So let me make sure that this is me under account information. Yes, it is. Excellent. So we're just going to go into flyers. And I will pick a couple of flyers or pick a template and then just show you how I would update mine. We may not get it all completed, but we'll get a lot of it completed. <coughs> So when you go into flyers, you've got these options to pick slate series, market updates. I mean, you really can pick whatever design you want. You could upload your own design. You could design your own. For me, I'm pretty lazy and not creative. So I kind of like just the basic flyers that are out here. They're still a lot classier than the edge. So if you click on one, we'll pick this one. And it does take about a minute to load. You also want to use Google Chrome. If you have uh, Microsoft eEdge or Edge, I'm sorry, don't use it with this. And if you have Internet Explorer, I wouldn't use that either. I would use Chrome. Um, I am going to select a backside template. So that's the front side. The back side is coming up. Again, it's going to load up. And you can pick it from a different series if you want. But there we go. You can save your work and go back to it, which is super handy if you maybe don't like the pictures that you have or you don't have your description filled out exactly right, etc. So there's my editing the template. Once you've logged into Michael Lewis, it will ask you to set up your 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 information, your photo, your phone number, etc. And it will keep showing you your customer information screen until you uncheck it. So that's where it's going to pull my photo. It does not, for some reason, pull everything, though. And I need to check my profile to see why it's not pulling my phone number. It is pulling my email address and website. Have you noticed that, too? Mine's doing the same thing. It doesn't pull my phone number. Okay. So I gotta update that. Yeah, I got updated every time. Um, and frankly, I just haven't taken the time to call and find out why. So. And I don't recommend doing this at your basic coffee shop if you can avoid it, because it really is so slow. And so or grounds for celebration or whatever. I mean, you can kind of see it chugging here. There we go. <coughs> so there's my photo. I could increase the size, maybe make it look human. Oh, and it did pull in my phone number, by the way. It pulled in all that information. Um, in this case, all I'm going to do is, is change and like Rochelle, I'm picking one of my listings and you should really sell this one instead. <laughs> um, I happen to save my description. It will check your spelling. You may have to play a little bit with size, just like EAGE. <coughs> and it'll reload. For this, I don't have one of those QR codes, so make sure that you, it's, it's a kind of a page within a page. So if you want to delete something, click on it and hit delete. Done. And then you got to change out your pictures. So you click on the picture, you hit upload, browse, <clears throat> I just downloaded all my pictures here, so for purposes of this, let it chug, and then you'll hit insert and it will be there. Was the photo straight from your camera or? It's one of Jake Boyd's. So, so you're using a high-res photo? I am. Yes. Okay. <coughs> so that would be... 
that I would not have worn my cell phone photos on the plane. So I'm not going to change all of these right now, but save my work. It's going to take a minute. Any questions while it's saving? I have one for you. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so when you do the high resolution picture, if you're going to pull back from matrix with the MLS, that should be a high resolution picture. Actually, um, Jake Boy will email you your pictures before you post them on MLS, and that's what I use. I don't pull them from MLS directly. They should, not, oh, okay. they should not download from the MLS. Those would be low don't resolution. Yes. Yeah, they've been yes. impressed. Okay, so just do it from my photographer's email. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Make sure, okay. unless he's only giving you low res for the MLS, make sure you're, make sure you're asking for the high res. <coughs> It's going to take a minute to save this too. Other questions? Okay, so we're going to go into how to download the proof. View proof and continue. So this is where I've done it. Now I want to just download the PDF. If you want to do that, or you can add it to your cart and also print them out and have an LMS print them out for you. Has anybody used these at their openings or their properties yet? What do you guys think? Oh, I, like, I did an open house flyer. It looked really nice. Yeah. It takes, you can't, you know, it's 12, not 12 30, day. let's quick print out a flyer and get to my open house. You can't do it like that. You gotta, yeah. It takes time to put them together, but they look really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Maybe you printed them from here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so you get your PDF, you can. Yeah, you just say PDF printed. I set mine to the printer and then asked them to mail them. To the Michael Lewis printer? No, I sent it to a local printer. Okay. Sale, and oh. then I asked, I gave you the address and I asked that email. Okay. So it's local. So it take, it's not as long. It doesn't take as long, yeah. And I know with Michael Lewis, you can upgrade to, to the first class mail. But yes, it wouldn't take as long in that way. As if you want to mail When you do your proof it, proof, it is also going to ask you to sign up that it's perfect, and that's so that if you spend all this money to print it out and then you find a typo, they you can't blame them for it. So, mm -hmm. FYI, um, after we put that in, then you can download the PDF. Now, some of their products, like their business cards and their door hangers, you actually have to pay for the PDF. I think it's about $12. Mm -hmm. May or may not be worth it for you. Um, I know my postcards ended. I didn't bother to pay for the PDF. I just saved the template and I've got it. But Go. There's my proof with LA Home things. I could do my download PDF right here. Online proof approval. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the cart. And does it tell you when there's going to be when there's going to be a charge for them before you go forward? Yep. Downloading the proof is free from right here. So I mean, I there's a, something that pops up or whatever. And then I could print these out here, or I could pur purchase a PDF separately on this one too, and it would give me that. Purchase a PDF and print material. So there are my options. Any questions? Sweet. Nora's also going to make us a video for the website about how to do your signature block with the Michael Lewis. Oh, that's a good idea. Does anybody else still need a signature block? Um, <laughs> everybody probably still needs a signature. And you can do those for your email, but also like for your cover photo on your Facebook and stuff like that too. Can you use yep. The email signature the Gabby sent the banner out also. Yep. For your yeah. Facebook page. The the oh. custom one that Michael Lewis did for our office. Mm -hmm. Like about hey, ten days ago. Oh yeah, that was my. She emailed us. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Good Susan. job. Pictures. Thank you, Susan. Thank yeah, you. Good Paris. job, Susan. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs>
So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the I didn't make you guys copy, so I'm going to download them. Ready? Yes. So HomeKeeper is an app that's free to us. It normally costs around $100 a month for just 1,000 contacts. Keller Williams gave it to us, and all associates, in September of last year at Mega Camp. And I, it just didn't get pushed out enough for people to understand what it was or what it could do for you. Um, so you can find it. Um, if you have the KW mobile app, it's already there for you to set up. Um, to get the free, you go to HomeKeeper, and notice it's spelled funny. It's HomeKeeper, but between the P and R, there's no E, dot com slash KW. And you go to that site and register for your app, and that's how you get it for free. And you say to the app, you do it? You're going to register here, and then you'll, it'll send you a link to download the app. You can also go to the app store. What is that? Homekeeper, H O M E A P E P R dot com. Uh -huh. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to show you on my phone. Oh, okay. I thought you should be reflecting like slash. Oh, slash K W. So, you want to download Homekeeper Pro from the App Store, whatever your App Store is. So initially I downloaded HomeKeeper, that's what ends up doing it, that's what your clients are going to download and they for you. So HomeKeeper Pro is our app. And so once you get in there, you'll be able to see there's how-to videos, so that's how to send it to your clients, how to send it to your vendors, how to make it. But this is where it comes in handy. And you can have people download either, but if they're on your KW Realty, then they have access to your vendors. So this is when people are saying, do you have a plumber? Do you have a painter? Do you have a cleaning lady? Do you have a, you send them the app, they download it, and they automatically go into your EH database and your phone. Can you swipe that screen? Because I didn't know this was here. Swipe the bottom half of your, here? Yep, there you go. So this, if your app is coming up like this, mm -hmm. you're gonna swipe left to get to the other links. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that for that at least three Yeah, your mortgage is coming here, okay. Okay. at least. Yeah. Yeah. From the website. Um, yeah, there's no arrow or prompt to <laughs> Right, to tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then when your clients go into the HomeKeeper app, a couple different things happen. So now I'm showing you your client experience. This is what they see. Down here, it's the directory. It's hard to see on here, but that's a little sign that says directory. Now they can see all of my people. Hmm. But you have to load in your vendors? Yes. Okay. You can do that on the computer? Okay. You can um, upload with an Excel spreadsheet. You can um, upload manually typing them each in. Um, there is, you can click on default, and anyone that's registered with DMAR gets loaded in there. Ooh, home inspectors, bankers, and you know, home phone and stuff. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. stuff like as you see people post in our Facebook group, I need a painter, I need a handyman, you should just be adding those to your own. Yeah. yeah. And then um, for your client, you are sending them push notifications every month. So once your clients register, pass by or sellers or anyone downloads the app, they're going to get a little ding in April. Hey, it's time to clean your gutters and then they can click on the vendor to do the gutter. And you can add whatever messages you want to add in there. So this is another way for you to be staying in touch with people after your transaction is closed. Um, I also like to use it for my vendors. So um, I'll show you the client app. And I'm, I'll send everyone these directions just in an email. <coughs> So here's one you can send to your clients. I'll send this to, um, directions on how to get this for everyone too. But once you're in the app, there's a marketing tab. And so you can download these. So see how it goes to, no. You have these flyers available to you also. So you can send them or load them in your monthly targeted marketing and see how it tells them where to join for me. 
And then for your vendors, you can send this to them and say, reach homeowners immediately before and after they move, check out your profile on my mobile app. Then they save you, and then they share you to their friends. Oh. So you what get a pretty good feedback. That? Okay. What's that? So get a good feedback. Mobile? Yes. What I love the most is when someone shares the plumber you refer to them to their friend, that person ends up in your database too. Huh? Oh. And it says, no Matt just referred, just referred Homekeeper to Sally. Sally downloaded the app. Now you have Sally's uh, name, email, and phone number. You can say, hey Sally, I see you downloaded the app. Did you find what you were looking for? They're in your database. Oh my gosh. Where do you get the flyers? Um, they're under mm -hmm. marketing when you're in the Homekeeper website. So they don't have to go do the Keller Williams app to get to it. They can just have the Homekeeper app. Right they can have the Homekeeper app. So if they didn't download KW Realty, and um, so when I post it on social media, I do the Homekeeper app because not everyone water fill the house. With, you know, they might not want home searching. Okay. Um, so it just depends on where they're coming from. But if they download your app and you registered for Homekeeper, they're going to get Homekeeper anyway. No one is watching my time. Um, and then, <laughs> including questions. Um, I will also send you this. So if you have not downloaded the mobile app yet to share with your clients, these will be step-by-step -step directions. So you can download the mobile app, and then you can go to HomeKeeper and download the HomeKeeper. Okay. And get registered. Okay. And you're emailing that up? Or up? Um, I was going to post it in the Facebook group. Oh, is that perfect. okay? Yeah, thanks. Can I answer any questions? Yes. Can you, since we don't have this yet, when we download it, can we, is there a way to like mass invite your current database and stuff? That yes. This is a new added feature that I have for my business. You should add If you that. use Gmail, you can select all your contacts and send it out. Okay. You can also select by contact groups. If you don't use Gmail, you can upload with an Excel spreadsheet. Cool. So you could, if you're using eEdge, you could export to Excel and then upload your Excel. And then, I also put it on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, the download my app here, download my vendors here. Um, and you'll get some from that also. And then I also sent it to um, just allied resources, LinkedIn primarily, but um, if you know someone that should be in my vendor app, a great service provider, plumber professional, please send them my way and we'll get them added. And so you've probably seen realtors posting stuff like that lately. They're either making their own or they're utilizing a service similar. Um, but you do have it for free, which is a huge um, ad, free ad. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, just so I did the sequence of events because I'm taking notes. Um, so you have to have your KW app to get this, or is this? I don't have to. Separate. Okay. Totally separate. So we go onto this website, we register, then does it sync up with our app?
So whenever you're driving, it, keep in mind though, it does track every single drive that you do. So whether you're with, with your friends or you're not driving, it tracks it all. Um, why I use it? Well, it tracks your miles but without you thinking about it and it provides you reports for tax time. So all I did was log into my online website for Mile IQ, printed off my report and gave it to my tax guy. You know, and it gives them everything. So in case you ever do get audited, well, you know, you're, you're safe on that piece. Um, how you do it, you simply swipe on your mobile phone one way to categorize personal miles and another way to categorize business miles. Could I do this little thing here? Um, hit one on the white one. One. Sometimes there's a lag, yeah. uh, but sometimes it's pretty quick. Okay, so it's not just me. Do you have to push a start and stop button before you go leave in the morning? Or That's just the beauty of it? No. You can also do it to where, um, like I don't have this feature, but you can say, you know, Monday through Friday, Friday 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you know it's all business. So then it just pre-locks it for you without you having to sweat. Mm -hmm. So you can also set that. The downside is that every time you stop, it thinks it's a new trip. Oh, so yeah. Sometimes when you stop for more than just you know stoplight, it thinks it's a new trip. So you have to sit yeah. there and say, oh, I stopped four times on the way to the house. So yeah. So what's it do with your trip? Does it sit there and wonder like if you're going to go left or right with it? Or does it? It just logs them all in for you. So I like to be honest with you. I don't do it till the end of the week. And just kind of swipe left and right. And I and I should probably just do the pre settings <coughs> Monday through Friday. I'm working, you know, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Anyways, and it just kind of does it for you. you know, Can you add your other family members' cars in there. So like if you drive more than one car for work, you can be recording in there. And then you just delete public transportation. There's a trash can. And you can just say public transportation. Yep. So it's fancy. It's so, all right. How do I go back to this thing? Uh, six. <coughs>
Oh, I did just say my little saying here. So who here uses uh, an accept, oh, that's the last point. Who here has lost time or maybe even a deal because you forgot your purchase agreement or listing agreement paperwork at the office? You know, or, or maybe like me a few times when I was a newbie, I was on the south side and then we had to come drive all the way to the west side to put the deal work together, <laughs> like sitting in front of a computer to write up the agreement or in person. Well, I stopped doing that because there's an app for that, right? So um, I use uh, I'll dot loop, <laughs> and I'll pull out my, usually I have my mini iPad in the car, and I'll just pull it out right then and there in the house if they want to make an offer, um, and just start it all up, and then everyone has their cell phones right in their pockets, right? No one leaves without them. So then get it all filled out, send it over to them, sign it, then deal, you know? So um, like I said, why use it? You put together a deal using your mobile device right then and there. No excuses that you forgot uh, the documents at home or that you'd have to go back to the office because your client might change their mind. Strike while they are in hot, caliente. Okay, so, um, how it's very, very similar to dot loop on, on your browser. Um, very simple interface. Uh, very similar to the online reading, like I said. So, I don't know. Do you guys want me to show you? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Where do you find it for Android? I was just looking on the Google Play Store and it's not coming up. Is it Amazon? No. There should be one for Android. Is it, I mean, is it an app or is it just a mobile website? No, it's an app. That's why I put those little pictures. That's what the well, app That's what I like. thought, but mm -hmm. is it iPhone only? Does anybody find it when it's Does anybody with a Samsung phone have it? Maybe it is a Now I can get to the mobile version of the site. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so it's quite handy. I've got yeah. yeah. a new deal just on my mini iPad. I've got a couple of times on my phone. That's a 6 plus, so it's pretty legible. Uh, I go through it right then and there with my clients, get it all filled out, so then they sign right there on the spot with their own phones. So, uh, I've done that quite a bit. So that's the second one. The advantage is that you can get on your phone and have a question for videos. You can get on the same video and also send the offers, email the offers to the other agent. You don't have to wait until you get somewhere to scan in the red for a new agent. Yeah, we sign it and then I just copy in the agent right then and there and it's all too, you know, so on the drive home, the, the agent usually calls me and we start talking. Anyway, so. um, I can answer my own question. It is only on my phone right now. Oh, is it? Okay. I did not know that. So, put that there. Uh, the next one is uh, Google Drive, so or some people might use Dropbox too, very similar. Um, so I have my question here is who's who here still stores files on their actual hard drive or computer? Then can't access it access it because you left the computer at home or in the office. Stop it, there's an app for that. Everything now you can store in Google Drive and access it. I can access it anywhere on my phone. All my files. So everything, including this PowerPoint. I mean, this isn't my computer and I just you know downloaded this PowerPoint. I was able to get this PowerPoint going back to the back here. So no need to store things on your computer anymore because you can use the cloud and access anywhere. Um, so you know if you ever ask yourself, so where's my file? And you have Google Drive, you'll just search within your Google Drive on your phone, tablet, or computer, anywhere, and be able to access it with your files. Um, I use it a lot for marketing stuff, but store files that way. Um, I use it for everything, really. It works very <coughs> similar to your traditional filing system on your computer. Uh, but is accessible via your mobile devices at any time. So you'll see the folder structures and everything just like you would on a desktop computer. Can you dump a bunch at one time? Oh yeah. You can drag and drop. <coughs> like on your actual computer you can download the Google Drive folder. You just open that oh, and, and just, you just drag over everything over. It'll make a copy so it won't delete the stuff on your desktop. Actually don't quote me. Then <laughs> <laughs> you what, still drag and drop. Drag and drop is a move. Is it an actual course. move? Yeah. Okay. If you if you highlight it and drag it, it moves it. Uh -huh. You could just click on it and then hit Control C to copy, and then go to your folder and hit Control V. Okay. 
And then the nice thing with doing that, if you have Windows for sure, I'm not as sure about Macs, but I do that on my PC. So it's basically I open everything from Windows Explorer and it syncs automatically. Does that make sense? No. No? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you an expert with your eye? I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty, I use it a lot, so. The challenge I have, and it's probably an easy answer for it, I have a drive for each of my email addresses, uh -huh. and I also have a download on my computer. That so is I, a huge issue. If I select save to drive, it sends it to my computer instead of to my email. It's, yeah, so I've worked on that one, I'm sorry. Is that the same as like saving to your hard drive kind of basically? I mean, no, that's, it's two different file structure, so if you're going to save it in Google Drive, specifically it'll save it in the cloud and whatnot, but if you save it on your desktop, that's, so I, don't, I guess I don't really know what you're asking. You what I found it. is if you have two accounts on the same computer, both on Google Drive, the Google Drive app, as far as I can tell, only can run one instance on your PC, oh, yeah. and so if you have multiple, you almost have to sign out of one and mm -hmm. sign back into one, but then your folder structure is still one of the accounts. So the only way, the easiest way I found to get around that is to use OneDrive for Microsoft for personal and Google Drive for work. But I know that's harder, easier said than done if you don't have a Hotmail or whatever. Or what I did too, similar, I mean, I have personal and business, but I made one email account my master one. Mm -hmm. And then you can designate your different email accounts to this one master one. Well, you, can, have you can do that like on the phone too easily. It's the if you have two different Google Drive accounts and then two different sets of folders is where it so it's not happy. It's doable to an extent. Um, so yeah, any other questions on Google Drive? I mean, I, there's a ton of mortgage crap. This is like I said, according to Junior, right? So. Uh, I like this one, so who here gets a question from their buyer about getting an estimated monthly payment while at the home you're looking at? Then you're, you either tell, ask their lender or, or you're still using a regular financial calculator. Well, stop it because there's an app for that. I use uh, QL Calc, um, uh, so you can give buyers a quick estimate on their monthly payment, including estimated PMI. I like QL Calc versus some other ones out there because it lets me plug in all the variables. Um, so I can put in purchase price, down payment, interest rate, term, annual taxes, and annual insurance. While well, some other ones won't let me manipulate those different variables and those different calculators. Can you go backwards with it? As far as the, putting in the monthly payment and then put, no, I don't think it has that capability. So it just has the ones up here. Like the ones in the white that you see there is where you can actually manipulate the monthly payment at the bottom. It just calculates after you manipulate the period. The MLS used to be able, the old system used to be able to work it backwards and oh. get to a, whatever makes it work. And you can work it backwards by knowing what everything your rates are, your taxes and insurance will carry each time now. Makes sense? Yeah, but you are trying to work it back to a low amount, filling in all the other stuff. We had a hard time with that on first mortgage app too. I don't know if Brian Swanson ever got that yeah. to work. But when we when we had the four matrix, we could do that on the MLS. It was really cool. Oh. That would be cool. No, no, this one won't let you do that. But if you do plug all those in, um, then you hit that little plus little button here. If you're you know thinking it's FHA or whatnot, uh, or you know below twenty percent. That'll kind of give you an estimated mortgage insurance payment. Mm -hmm. I always tell my clients it's estimated, like more of a real accurate number, definitely a lender. But it gives them a pretty decent ballpark. So you just have to click on the plus sign to be able to get to the PMI mm -hmm. page. Yep. Correct. Okay. And the one caveat here, or it's you always have to put at least three and a half percent down for it to give you a set PMI. You know, just because. You know, most loan, loans you need at least that. It has one. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I think this is my last one. Yeah. So this is a must-have in my opinion. Um, so if you don't have it, download it. This is the only one that costs money. It's ninety-nine cents. Um, so my question is, who here still can't do calculus three 
for differential equations to figure out what to put on these <laughs> For your listing docs, there still does, does tax for the duration. <coughs> Stop the first half that. <laughs> okay, so it's quite simple. Um, the, app, the app calculates the tra tax duration for you. Why use it? Because why would you want to do it in the annual way for those of us that have? Uh, how? Just plug in the variables quite simply. You know, you plug in estimated close date, the day you know you think it's going to close, and uh, and enter your annual tax amount. Hit calculate, and then it does it for you. Questions on that? One? It's awesome. Download that if you don't have it. Yes. Yes. I think this is a must have for all realtors. So. And, uh, it works. <laughs>